morning. Let's talk about meniscus tears. A meniscus is a cartilage disc that's found in the knee. There's actually two of them. We have one on the inner side of the knee, which we call the medial meniscus, and one on the outer side of the knee, which we call the lateral meniscus. These two discs function as shock absorbers or cushions to minimize the stress on another type of cartilage that we have in the knee, which we call the articular cartilage. The articular cartilage is the cartilage that uh, actually coats the ends of the bones. So it, it's present on the bottom of the femur at the knee, on the top of the shin bone or the tibia, and it's present in all our other joints as well. If the two menisci are not present or if they're torn, then the articular cartilage sees increase in stress and can trigger the onset of osteoarthritis. That is by, by no means the only cause of osteoarthritis. However, it is certainly a significant contributor. Now, I see many patients every week uh, who present with knee pain, and many of them are suffering from meniscus tears. Why do we get meniscus tears? Uh, why do these little discs tear so easily uh, once we reach our fourth, fifth, and decades beyond? Our meniscal tissue is non-regenerative. It's similar to our brain or our heart. If we have a heart attack or a stroke, we do not regenerate those areas of our heart or our brain. It simply scars in. Yet if we cut our skin, our skin heals. Uh, that tissue is regenerative. Same with muscle and a lot of other tissues in our body. So the meniscal tissue has uh, very little mechanisms for repairing itself. Therefore, every step that you've taken, every twist that you've done, every time you've knelt down or squatted down, you've put a uh, force across that meniscus and eventually it tears. Sometimes it tears just turning and reaching for something in your refrigerator. A lot of times people will note that they knelt down to pick something up and when they went to stand up they felt something rip inside their knee and noted the onset of pain. The typical patient with a meniscus tear doesn't have much in the way of pain with walking. Sometimes they do. Uh, it depends on the size of the tear but usually they'll tolerate walking in a single direction very well. Patients with meniscal tears will complain of going, uh, pain going downstairs. They'll have pain getting up from a seated position. They'll have pain with turning, pivoting, and twisting. And some patients, if the tear is large, will complain that the knee is buckling or giving way or feels unstable. Now, I also see a number of patients in the office for a second opinion who have been told that they have a meniscus tear for an MRI which was obtained simply because they had pain one day and were immediately sent for an MRI. That's a topic for another discussion. And the MRI revealed a degenerative meniscus tear. And they've been told that they need surgery to quote unquote fix or repair that tear. And they're wondering if I agree. Now, what are the different types of meniscal tears? There are degenerative meniscal tears, where if you look at it, the edges are simply frayed. The tissue is, has been destroyed from years and years of use. Nothing you did wrong. It, the tissue simply wore out. Again, like my analogy with the rotator cuff, it's like the front of a pair of blue jeans that you've worn for decades and it, the tissue just simply wore out. Then there are those who have suffered uh, more acute tears, and these tears can have different shapes and different patterns, and based on the shape and pattern will determine how symptomatic or how bothersome the meniscal tear will be. If a flap of tissue is created and that flap is loose and moving around within the knee, that's when you're going to have giving way and you're going to have pain with many activities. You're not going to tolerate those tears well. And most patients with flap tears or unstable tears 
will go on to require an arthroscopy or a scope to either repair or remove that torn piece. Most people with degenerative meniscal tears may have an one or two exacerbations or periods during the year where their knee hurts, but by and large they get around just fine and lead very active lifestyles with these degenerative tears and do not require an arthroscopy for treatment of those tears. So the decision as to whether or not surgery is necessary is really based upon the pain you're experiencing, the effect that's having on your quality of life, the type of tear that you have, and how long you've been experiencing the symptoms. So if you are diagnosed, uh, or I'm sorry, if you have knee pain, you uh, referred for an MRI fairly early, and you're found to have a degenerative meniscal tear, just wait. A lot of times those symptoms will go away, and either they'll never come back or they'll come back once or twice a year, and you'll still be able to lead a very active lifestyle. If you are, uh, if you sustain an injury and you have an, a very unstable tear, a tear we call a horizontal cleavage tear or a radial tear or a flap tear, those tears tend to remain symptomatic and if after four, five, six weeks you still have the same degree of discomfort and quality of life issues, then you might be a good candidate for an arthroscopy. Um, what exactly is an arthroscopy? I suggest you check out my website or a lot of the information available on the internet where you can find some good animated videos about what an arthroscopy entails. So. If you have a meniscal tear, it's not all doom and gloom. Many of them do not require surgery. Some of them do. Some are repairable. Some are simply removed. We try to repair them as much as possible, but only certain tears are in fact repairable. One caveat, if you have a meniscal tear and you're experiencing uh, instability or giving way, be very careful with your activities. You don't want to find yourself on a stairway uh, carrying a load of objects and your knee gives way. So if you have instability symptoms, make sure that you have a hand available to hold on to something at all times um, while, while you are in the recuperative phase or awaiting surgery or simply waiting to see if the symptoms are going to recover on their own. And by no means is this uh, uh, urgent surgery or emergent surgery or oh my god you have to have this done tomorrow. As always my disclaimer applies this is not medical advice. You should discuss these issues with uh, your orthopedic surgeon or your family, friends and uh, primary care doctor to determine if based upon your symptoms and quality of life you feel um, you would rather be treated surgically or non-surgically. Have any questions, feel free to uh, hit me through my website, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and wherever else I reside. Thank you. Bye.